Asylum seekers in Cardiff have been forced to wear a brightly colored wristband in order to get food. The brightly colored bands had been given so that they could claim meals in their residence. The move was eventually scrapped after it caused a general outcry. The asylum seekers claimed they had been victimized as a result of being easily identified. First Minister Carwin Jones said he was appalled by the wristbands. The news came just a few days after a similar outcry in Middlesbrough. Asylum seekers were targeted after being housed in properties with distinctive red doors. Now joining me to discuss the asylum situation from Cardiff is Labour Welsh Assembly member Jenny Rathbone and blogger Alessio Peroni, who covers the refugee crisis in Cardiff for his blog Diaspora Cardiff. Uh, welcome to the programme, both of you. Um, Jenny, um, this is a, a, re a remarkable uh, development. Are you glad that this has been withdrawn? Um, I'm, I, I suppose I'm slightly surprised at the way in which this story has taken off, um, because this is not... I think it's totally inappropriate that somebody has compared this to wearing um, a yellow star uh, on people's uh, breasts. I think this is... Uh, m many people um, are, are asked to wear wristbands in situations like going into a concert or something like that. And um, Not to get your food, though. Not to be dependent on it for your food. Well, I, yeah, I've visited Fear Spring several times, and um, the fact is that the dining room is inside... Uh, the building where the accommodation is, and it, it's quite important for the safety of the accommodation um, of uh, those who are um, accommodated there that they uh, they don't that there is a control on who comes in. Um, so uh, I'm I'm pleased that we are now going to have um, some form of ID system to ensure that people um, are are able to get what they need. But you have to recognise that. Not all asylum seekers have objected to this, and some people are saying that um, it's a useful way of ensuring that those who are entitled to food actually get it rather than the food running out because other people have come in and um, had the food instead. So you don't really share the First Minister's response to this? I mean, he was pretty shocked by it. Yeah, I haven't spoken to the First Minister about this yet, um, so um, I'm not, uh, not responding in the same way. Um, these are, you know, at this time of year, everybody's wearing a shirt or a jumper or a jacket. So it's not as if these things are particularly visible. Um, it's perfectly easy to hide it under your jumper. Um, so I'm a, a little surprised at the way in which this story has, has taken off, really. So you would agree with the Conservative MP from Monmouth who said, look, I wear one on holiday, what's the problem? No, I'm not going to uh, agree with the Conservative MP from Monmouth, but... Um, but you have pretty much I'm the same sort of attitude. Are, what, what's all the fuss about? We have to ensure that the people who we need to be looking after are the ones who are receiving the care and attention that, that we are all uh, committed to them getting. OK, let me bring in Alessio. Alessio, welcome to the programme. Um, what, what would you say the sort of general conditions for um, asylum seekers are like in Cardiff? Um, well... To begin with, um, they're developing at the moment, and I think as for what the government is doing, uh, Ms. Rathbone was, would probably be the better guest to speak to, but as for now, I've spoken to a lot of people. There are quite a few charities um, taking care of refugees and asylum seekers in Cardiff. Um, people I've spoken to with my blog help them in um, different capacities, I've got to say. But there are services working to uh, help them integrate and have a decent living in Cardiff. And uh, is that working? Well, now, it's hard for me to give you a general um, overview of the city in and of itself, because I'm, you know, I've, I've spoken to some refugees, and yes, for many of them it might be working, for others might have a different opinion of it. I think uh, with regards to, I don't know, English, different charities are of mm, helping them in different capacities, as, as I say. And yes, um, the, the refugees I've been able to speak with and I've uh, met were quite satisfied of the welcome uh, package, I would say, that they've received in Cardiff. Uh, Jenny, uh, were you pleased to see uh, Jeremy Corbyn visiting the jungle over the weekend? Some politicians wouldn't have done that. 
No, I think that's entirely appropriate, and I, I take my hat off to Jeremy Corbyn. It's really important that we can see what conditions um, people are living in um, and, um, and uh, trying to ensure that people are moved on from there as quickly as possible. I mean, it really is um, unacceptable for people to be living in tents uh, when the weather is very, very cold. Do you think it's one of the things that perhaps nudged that visit by Jeremy Corbyn? Do you think it was one of the things that perhaps, shall we say, nudged David Cameron into um, making a kind of gesture towards accepting more um, orphaned uh, refugees? Well, it's possible, but um, I can't say that for certain. But um, it, it is possible that he, he, he thought that was a good time to um, put that out after Jeremy had, had taken the initiative. I, I don't think um, David Cameron's been to the, uh, the jungle in... Uh, do you think that uh, the British government is uh, anywhere near meeting its um, responsibilities here? Yeah. The, the, Swedish, the Swedish government um, allowed in 20,000 people in two weeks. That's the total that the British government are planning to let in over five years. Absolutely not, no. I mean, we have a million uh, people seeking asylum in Europe um, at the moment. And at the, mo at the moment, we're just allowing the poorest countries and at the southern tip of Europe to take all the responsibility, and that can't be right. Um, Sicily is one of the poorest parts of, of Italy, and they've got thousands of people pouring in there every day. Greece is also um, receiving thousands of, of refugees, and we should be playing a much greater part. Mm. Uh, Alessio, um, in your experience talking to refugees in Cardiff, um, let's leave the the politicians and the institutions aside for a moment from the sort of um, general response they get from citizens in Cardiff? Do you think uh, they get a warm welcome? Well, yeah, the, the ones I've spoken to, they do uh, get a warm welcome. And we have to bear in mind that refugees and asylum seekers that arrive in Cardiff are different. They have different needs. So they might be involved with different charities and different people. The ones I've been able to speak with, yeah, they're overall... Uh, satisfied with the welcome they're receiving Cardiff um, and they try to integrate as well. And uh, do you think that more could be done and if so what? Well um, people I've spoken to are, are trying very hard um, you know there are charities going to Calais on a regular basis. They're being established in travels, trying to raise funds for refugees within Cardiff and out of the city's boundaries for a long time. So um, it's hard to say whether more could be done. Uh, I think most, like, the only refugee that wasn't entirely satisfied with what uh, was given to him, or the ones I've met, was a refugee that just didn't find the charity that was offering the service he was needing. He had uh, PTSD, and there were charities offering PTSD. Diverse Sim Kimro uh, in Cardiff offers free mental health services for refugees. He just wasn't aware of it, so um, now he has started. A lot of times, this might be the problem. It's just disjointed, maybe, rather than, uh, you know, a service lacking completely. Mm. Uh, Jenny, do you think there's more that the Welsh Government could do about that coordination? The, the, the issue at the moment is in the hands of the UK government because uh, we are doing what we can without additional funding um, and we have a very, very tight situation with housing at the moment. I would like to see George Osborne investing money in building more housing rather than giving more money to the bankers um, and, uh, because we desperately need more housing. Um, and that is obviously one of the big issues in terms of what's limiting us um, for, you know, in, ensuring that people are, are properly housed. Um, um, so I think that is uh, one of the constraints. Unless we have a UK government that is prepared to, um, to actually do the practical things that are required, um, the uh, Welsh government has, is, has, is on a very short budget. We're having to make uh, reductions in our services because of the amount of money we get from the UK government, and we very much do need more money. We've got to invest in the, the schools that children will need to attend, and also we need more and better housing. Uh, Alessio, 
is that your experience that one of the the things that asylum seekers need most is uh, is housing i suppose in a way they wouldn't be in this hostel and wouldn't be wearing the wristbands if they were able to find their own homes well this is my personal experience and the refugees asylum seekers that i've met uh, had housing uh, they had accommodation so that wasn't their need i can't possibly say that Cardiff doesn't need more housing for refugees. That's not within my personal experience. So, um, but the ones I've met, they did have, um, they did make provisions to, 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 you know, live in a house. They had, uh, well, it depends on the refugee. Again, some of them were uh, already in their careers and they could afford their own house. Uh, others were students in their home countries. So it really depends on who we're talking about. So, but in my personal experience no um refugees of met did have an accommodation uh, and so if if housing was was not perhaps one of the most pressing needs if you had to sort of rank the top three things that you think that the asylum seekers that you've met would need what would those be oh well um, i can't i can't really say that um now i think well Possibly this coordination I was uh, talking about, you know, make, making refugees more aware that uh, the services they might need do exist already. Uh, I think this has been um, an issue, the, the, possibly the only uh, big issue, the only major issue that one refugee has reported to me. Uh, the others, you know, it's uh, problems connected to uh, being an asylum seeker. Will I? you know be accepted will i be able to live here as a refugee or not but uh, as for when it comes down to services i think making refugees and asylum seekers aware that the services they might need do exist and they are available i think this um is a major improvement that we could we could see mm. uh, jenny finally what, what would you say was the sort of general atmosphere i mean it's a a very contentious political issue um cardiff on the other hand is a port city it's relied for its vitality on waves of immigrants. What would you say the sort of popular attitude now is about that question? Uh, whilst there are some uh, people who are hostile to um, people they perceive of as foreigners, um, in general, people have been hugely um, sympathetic to and hospitable to um, this wave of people coming who are fleeing um, war and uh, conflict. And, and what we need to be able to give them and I hope we are giving them, is, um, number one, a safe place to be, um, and then um, having processed their application, obviously what people need is work, as well as, um, as other public services. Um, obviously, on, on arrival, they are given um, thorough health checks so that we are able to um, provide whatever health services they need in the first instance. Um, but having what obviously they all these people are coming who are willing to work, they're not allowed to work initially. So um, the people of Cardiff have generally been extremely um, generous in the support that they have given, um, donating um, items or money to uh, enable the voluntary agencies who are supporting refugees to to provide for them. You know, providing them with clothes. Um, providing them with advice, providing them with English lessons. These are the things that asylum seekers need in order to establish um, a new residence and a, a useful uh, life in the country they've um, had to leave. Okay. In the country that, that, you know, that they're now living in because they've had to leave their own country. Okay, Jenny Rathbone from the Welsh Assembly and Alessio Pioni, thanks very much for joining us.